with us now from Davos mm -hmm. is Bob Dudley, CEO of BP. And, and the one thing I noticed immediately, Bob, you're, uh, I saw a lot of your teeth um, because you're smiling. I mean, th th you didn't expect oil prices to get here this soon, did you? I didn't. It takes a little pressure off. We're not going to plan on it forever, but you're right. It feels a lot different than it did last year when we were here. Helps, doesn't it? It, it does help, especially when you're working your way through. With your forecast, because you, you, in both the, the short term and intermediate term, I think, didn't expect uh, anything much above 55 or 60. And there are people, mm. uh, some of the Wall Street banks are saying now 60 to 80 is the next range. Do you believe that, number one? And, and what changed, do you think? Uh, don't, it could happen. You know, there's a lot of geopolitical risk premium built into the price. I think, I think there's probably $5 in it. And people uh, forget there's a weaker dollar, which also raises the oil price right now. Aren't we um, at a point where there's, there's more of a shortfall in production than people expect it to globally with, with the economies? being a little bit stronger around the globe? You know, stock levels are continuing to come down. Demand has come up, uh, probably more. We see it in the economic growth. But I do think we'll see the shale come back on, moderate this as a shock absorber a little bit. We're still going to play on 55 did, to 60. Did we get sort of taken in by just arguing on the supply side of things and forget because we, we didn't, demand didn't seem to play a role because of the, mm. the renaissance in the United States. It was mm. all about, we didn't, all the supply came online from, technology and horizontal drilling. We took our eye off demand, but demand has continued to get to be very strong or stronger than expected. Well, with a low price, you create more demand. So as the price goes up, some of that demand will moderate a little bit. But uh, the fundamentals have been OPEC has pulled production off the market and the stock levels will come down, probably hit the five year average uh, this year sometime. So we hear about, you know, domestically things get shut down at lower mm -hmm. prices, but they're mm -hmm. able to be turned on quickly. Where in terms of 80, 90 percent. Where are we in terms of being turned back on, in terms of going uh, all out for, for production right now in, in the United States? Well, I think there's some discipline back in the U.S. with cash. People have been using the cash, plowing it right back into things, and people have been putting some pressure, I think, on the U.S. side to create some more returns. So they're a little more reluctant, but you can see it building up in the, in the well inventory and stuff, and I expect U.S. production to rise again. It is coming up, but there could be another million barrels a day this year, 10 million barrels a day. When it comes to the, the, the news uh, from the Trump administration on opening up all the offshore mm. uh, leases, mm. out, of, out of all the, the CEOs, mm. you seem to be sort of the most tepid in your response. And I immediately thought, well, mm. you know, burn once, the, whatever the, the expression is. I, are, are you hesitant to, to go full force in that because of the experience of BP from a few years ago? I think it's more that we're a really long-term industry. You have to shoot seismic, uh, going out and saying, yes, there's things out there we want to work. You want to go slow. We've got a lot on our plate. You know, we're pretty disciplined now after what happened with our capital frameworks and stuff. So we've got a plan. We've got lots to do. So you're not gun shy offshore? Uh, no, we have a huge business right, in the Gulf already. of Mexico. Right. I mean, I even think part of the eastern Gulf, which is far away from Florida, which is closed, things like that, I think. Could, what did you think of the closing? In Florida. Now we're finding out that that was, uh, you know, you read the scuttlebutt. There's always scuttlebutt. But mm -hmm. supposedly uh, Zinke didn't check with, with the administration or with the president mm -hmm. on agreeing to Rick Scott's um, request to, to not do Florida. I read that. I don't, I don't know you exactly don't what any, happened. And, I don't have any special insight on it. Um, well, but, where would but, you? Uh, is the problem in Florida? Mm -hmm. You said you wouldn't drill where you could see the drills, but Definitely is that the not. issue, or is it a, they're worried about a spill on the beaches? Or no, I think uh, I think geologically uh, there are part, there's a sort of an imaginary line that goes down the Gulf of Mexico, sort of right in the middle of it, and there's probably things way out away from Florida that's on the other side of that that could be prospective. But going up near the beaches of Florida, I think I am gun shy about that, given our experience there. I think we're a safe company, but. I think anyone. How will the industry approach uh, Anwar? Well, Anwar is, um, people have an image of Anwar as uh, beautiful white mountains and streams and, uh, and forests. It's, it's really coastal plain like the rest of the north, uh, north slope there. We signed an agreement back in around 1997 that's just been opened up and it's, it's, it, we have a piece of Anwar. You're so one of we're the few. With, you've you've uh, got some experience up there. And it, there's some challenges. Uh, that's right. We're working with Chevron. They're the operator on this piece. So we're looking at that. And we'll, we'll see what happens. I think that area is perspective. I think Alaska probably wants to develop. I know they do. The governor's told me they would like to develop their natural resources. So. I mean, we think of it as, mm -hmm. as a, a place that could just add mm -hmm. to 
the, these, this, what I mentioned the Renaissance uh, in the United States. We think of yeah. it as, you know, it could be a very, we could open up, it could be great. Is, is there more challenges than we think? Is it harder to, uh, to, to work up there and to, to develop those resources? Well, it's in the Arctic. We've been right. working up there for 30 years. There's, 65 uh, know do how it, to 65 do enough it. To, to, uh, to warn it? I think uh, certainly with oil, you know, we get some inf there'll need to be some infrastructure and roads up there. But I think uh, a real opportunity for Alaska is to be able to add more natural gas. And then they put it in the LNG that they're talking about and being able to ship uh, to, to Asia and China. Where are we in the development of, of LNG? And what, what, let's say 10 years from now, are we... 10% of, of where we're going to be, 50%, what, where is it? I mean, that's going to be a, a, an industry that, that really comes into uh, the forefront, isn't it? Already is, I guess. Yeah, the U.S. has just blessed with enormous amounts of natural gas. It's going to drive the economy. It's going to be a huge boost to the, to the country. It's going to have so much of it that it'll make sense to export some of it as well. So I think we've got uh, three big plants now. I could see, you know, 10 down the road, yeah. including Alaska. You're on Rosneft's board, aren't you? I am. I am. You deal with the Russians all the time. Yeah, I do. And I... Comments and on I, what uh, you're watching here. We, we, talk, we, we talk about Russia in the news occasionally mm, over here. I've seen. I've seen. Yeah. I've, I've, I have a fair amount of experience in Russia. I lived there for nine years with my family working in oil and gas. And so are they, are they business. horrible or, or, or are they frenemies? What, what, how should we view Putin and, and the... Well, I can tell you I've had uh, some adventures there, but I've never really had difficulties with the Russian government. I work carefully within the sanctions, not to step over any of the lines for sure. But our experience and our relationships there are good. And quite frankly, I think it's good to have people talking to them. And I think commerce can build bridges. And you're, you're also uh, not consensus in terms of you think OPEC and, and Russia will, you know, that, that that deal won't end immediately, that that, that actually that they're, mm. they're going to continue to, even with prices high, that no one's going <laughs> to decide to... To produce more? Yeah, people, people said they could never reach a deal, and there's always a debate inside of Russia about it, and I think that debate will continue, but I think that cooperation probably will continue. It's good for everything. I mean, the world needs, uh, it's not good for the world to have a very, very low oil price. It's not good for the world to have a very high price, but yeah. keeping it within a balance. Anything, what, what should we expect from Aramco? Anything, uh, you got any... Like, non-consensus thinking there on what happens. You got to do anything with Aramco, BP? They're good partners of ours. We know them really well. We work with them on all kinds of different initiatives. We don't have big projects in uh, Saudi Arabia, but uh, they, I mean, they continually say they're going to IPO that and they're going through the processes, I think, of picking which cities to list in. Uh, feels like it's moving. All right. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.